So now I'm going to show you uh, how to use the Excel spreadsheet to help you calculate some of this uh, data, to data to enter into our templates uh, because it's not always provided in the research studies. So this is the Excel spreadsheet and you can see that we have here uh, event rates for the placebo and drug group, the relative risk reduction, absolute risk reduction, and numbers needed to treat with confidence intervals in exactly the same order and the same color as they appear in our templates. And, we pr and we're going to be able to calculate all these just from changing the numbers in these cells here. And I provided, or we provided two samples for you. One is if the original publication just gives you the event rate, um, and they don't give you the numbers of events. If they just give you the event rate, you use this top uh, sample here. However, if they give you the number of events that occur, for each outcome in the placebo and the drug group, then you use this bottom uh, sample here. And that's the usual case, so that's the one that I'm going to demonstrate now. So uh, what I'm going to do first is to make a couple of copies of this. So I just highlight this whole thing, all the, um, all the rows with all the numbers, because that's where the calculations are. And I just press uh, Control C, and I move my cursor down about four rows in case I want to make some uh, some notes above later on. And then I just press Control V. I go down a couple of more because I'm going to do two outcomes, and press Control V again. Now, just to make sure I keep things straight, I label these, and I make this placebo, PBO, because I'm lazy, and this one's zoledronic acid because we're going to be looking at um, a study on osteoporosis. And I bold these just to make them stand out so I don't get confused. Okay. So now we're going to go to our, our study and get the data that we put into these four cells. Our study from the New England Journal of Medicine 2007 it's uh, from table two here, and we're going to be looking at uh, any fractures and hip fractures. So the first thing I'm going to do, or the next thing I'm going to do, is to go back and put in here the outcomes that I'm going to be uh, looking at. So the first one is going to be any fractures. And the next one, and I'm going to put in here the source of that data, just which I know is table two. And down here, I'll put in hip fractures. And I do this because I'm, there may come a time when I want to go back to this study, uh, look at this information, just to confirm that I've uh, got things right. Or if somebody says, well, where did you get that? I'll say, well, it's in this study. It's table two. So now I have to enter in the number of subjects uh, that were in the placebo group and the zoledronic acid group. And I won't go and show you that in the table because that's always easy to find. It's in, usually in table one of the study. So uh, for the placebo group, it's 1,062. And for the zoledronic acid group, it's 1,065. And I do put the same information down here, 1,062 and 1,065. So now I put in the number of subjects in the placebo and zoledronic acid group. Now I have to go and find out the number of subjects uh, that had any fractures in the placebo and zoledronic acid group and the number that had hip fractures in those two groups. So we go back to, to our table two and we see here that for any fractures 139 people in the placebo group had a fracture and for the zoledronic acid it was 92 for hip fractures, it was 33 and 23. So now we put those in, those numbers in our Excel sheet. So now we're looking at any fractures. We put in 139 here and 92 for the zoledronic acid group. For hip fractures, it was 33 in the placebo group and 23 in the zoledronic acid group. And you can see that the Excel sheet has calculated for us the event rates in, the, in both groups, 
the relative risk reduction, the absolute risk reduction, and the numbers needed to treat with confidence intervals. So now we can go and put that information into our template. And that's what we'll do now very briefly. So now we go back to our template slide that has the balloon. We click on the balloon, copy it with the control C. We go to the slide where we have the graph, and this is the graph from the same study that's showing um, the cumulative hazard, sorry, the cumulative incident rates uh, in the placebo and zoledronic acid group for any fractures. And then we paste the balloon into this with uh, control V. And once again, we move the balloon where we want it, change the pointer, and we change the data. Now I want to go back and show you something about this Excel sheet calculator. If you look at the hip fractures, you'll see that the numbers needed to treat, uh, the point estimate is 106, but the upper confidence interval is minus 242, so this is a minus number. And if that's, uh, if you get a minus number for one of the confidence intervals of the numbers needed to treat, that indicates that it's a not a statistically significant result. So, and if you go back to table two of the study, you'll see that the p-value is 0 0.18. So that's what happens if you find yourself, well, that's the interpretation, if you find yourself getting a negative number for one of the confidence intervals of the number needed to treat. Now suppose all the numbers needed to treat ended up being negative numbers. So just suppose for the, uh, the zoledronic acid group, we had, say, uh, 70 events compared to 33 in the placebo group. This changes all our numbers needed to treat to negative numbers, which indicates that the, the drug, in this case zoledronic acid, was having a harmful effect, so the numbers needed to treat now become numbers needed to harm. So that's just how to interpret uh, the negative numbers uh, if, if you happen to come across them in numbers needed to treat. I'm now going to show you how you might find this Excel spreadsheet useful for other uh, applications, rather than other than just uh, filling in our templates. I find it them useful because I, I accumulate outcomes from different studies and I can always go back and review them. So how I separate one study from another is to uh, put a divider in here. So I just go ab above the outcomes that I put in and I merge these cells and I just put in a few notes just to remind myself uh, what this study was. So it's going to be Zoledronic Acid. And the author was Lyle. And it was New England Journal of Medicine, uh, 2007. And then I'll there's some color just to separate it from the rest. So I now know that everything below this divider uh, comes from this study. I know what the outcomes were and I know where I got the information. So um, that's how you might find this helpful. There are, if, if you look at the bottom of this Excel sheet, you'll see there are a number of tabs. Um, the next one over is called Complete Calculations. And this one also calculates uh, relative risk and odds ratios for you. You don't need this um, for filling in our templates. For filling in our templates, you just need the basic calculations tab. There are other, other um, tabs down here that can do, do other calculations for you that you may wish to explore. But uh, as I say, the basic calculations one is all you need to fill in the tablets, the, the templates. So that's the end of our demonstration. If you have any questions or concerns about this, uh, please don't hesitate to give me a call or email me. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for your interest in standardizing presentation of research data in our continuing education programs.